Welcome on this live broadcast. Today we have a special guest for you. Her name is Darlene Chapman. She is in a beautiful state of Tennessee, and uh, I'm excited to have her on this live broadcast. We're going to talk about her testimony, uh, her gospel career, and also she is very influential. She has a voice that reached to thousands of people daily through the social media, and we are so thrilled to have Darlene Chapman on Vision Television Network today. I will ask you for a favor, if you can share this broadcast live on your Facebook timeline with your YouTube family, anywhere you possibly can, because I want to put an emphasis on this broadcast because Darlene have a phenomenal testimony that which you cannot ignore today. So I wanna bring with that my very good friend, getting to know each other. It was a great thing talking on the phone, but now finally she's on my show. So thank you so much, Darlene, for coming on the show. And uh, I'm just thrilled to have you. Thank you so much. And I love the way you say my name. That is just. <laughs> you like that, Darlene? Yeah, I love that. It's almost like Darlin. I like that. <laughs> it's. I, I was keep thinking about it. Anytime I say Darlin. So, and then it's keep writing darling the traditional way. And I'm like, why is keep writing? I'm saying, trying to say Darlene. So. <laughs> I love it. Don't change it. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on here. It is an honor. You know, I, I, that's my goal is to share my testimony and give other people hope because my past is not very pretty. Uh, it's not something that I enjoy sharing, but I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary. Yes, absolutely. But before we go into your past, you have a phenomenal voice. And before this uh, show, uh, we talked about like, I would love to have you someday come on, you can um, sing. But today we want to hear when did you discover that you have a beautiful voice and you want to sing for the Lord? I've, I've been doing it since I, as far as back as I can remember. I was three years old. My daddy was a preacher. And I told my mother sitting there in church one Sunday, I said, hey, mom, I want to sing a song today. And she said, sing a song. Do you know a song? <laughs> and I was three. And I said, yes, I want to sing a song. I want to sing Jesus Loves Me. And so she said, well, go up there and tell your dad. And so my dad was sitting up on the stage. Uh, and so I went up there. And of course, I was my daddy's little little girl. And so I got in daddy's lap and I said, hey, daddy, I want to sing a song. And he said, OK. He didn't ask me, do you know the song, what song or anything? And I got up and I started singing a cappella, and I got it a little too high the first time. And then I started it again. And I was so shy and backwards that the only way that I could get through the song is to turn my back to the audience. <laughs> And I sang and I was looking at my daddy. And of course, my daddy was just beaming. Um, and when I got through singing and I turned around, the church just, you know, applauded and stuff like that. But the big story about that, Adnan, is that um, one of the men that had been coming to my, my mom and dad's church, my dad's church for years, always sat in the very back of the church, uh, was not a Christian, had never been saved. And my dad used to go over to his house quite often and pray with him and pray for him, but he never would surrender his heart to Jesus. And that day that I sang, he made his way down to the altar and he surrendered his heart and life to Jesus. And my daddy asked him, said, you know, I've been praying for you and talking to you and ministering to you for years. Why did you choose today? And this was what he said. And I have chill bumps now because children need to be used in church. Um, but he said, I always could find fault or some reason not to give my heart to the Lord. I could always find fault in somebody or something. And he said, but this little girl that was three, he said, I had no more excuses. I ran out of excuses and I couldn't find any fault in her. I couldn't see any sin in her life. And he said, I always told the Lord when I run out of excuses, then I will surrender my heart. And so ever since then, I've known that I've had a calling on my life. Ooh. And so um, I've been singing ever since. Praise the Lord. That is phenomenal. But you have, um, you know, every single person on the planet of the earth have a story. But you have a very unique one story is broken. But at the same time, today you are who you are today. It's because of God put you through some, you've been through some stuff, but God put you together. And here you have, we have a whole yeah, beautiful darling. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I look back at my at my life and, um, you know, I made some bad choices and but we're not defined by our past. And that's yeah. the message that I want to get across to people today, because so many people, when I share my testimony that I'm about to share, uh, I always have somebody come up and say, I can relate to your story. And I always thought that God could never forgive me for what I've done. So I grew up in church. As I said, my dad was a minister and my dad and my mom and my, my family would go out and sing. He would run revivals. And that was all I ever knew. I was saved at the age of seven. My daddy baptized me. Um, and I really did get saved. You know, some people say as children, we don't really know right from wrong, but I really did. I got it. When I got saved, I got it. Um, I was involved in church all the time. My daddy and mother didn't have to make me go. I loved church. And so church was was my thing. I loved church um, and I loved the Lord. Um, but right out of high school, I got married and I married a guy that was not a Christian. Now, I know people are going to say, well, you should have known better uh, being raised in church. And I did. Uh, and my daddy walking down the aisle right before he walked down the aisle at my wedding, he said, darling, it's not too late. <laughs> and I said, daddy. But he was trying to tell me that the Bible tells us that we're not to be unevenly yoked. And there is a true message to that story. And my life will prove it, um, that that is a huge part of a successful marriage is to make sure that God is in the center of it. And so I thought that I, he loved me so much I could change him. I mean, I was 18 right out of high school. Um, but that's not what happened. And shortly after we married, I knew I had made a huge mistake. Um, he was very abusive and I'm not talking physically so much. He has hit me several times, knocked me out one time. Um, I came, I came to, and my, I was hemorrhaging out my ear. Um, he was very abusive, very controlling, very much a narcissistic kind of personality. Um, and yet I stayed, I stayed through that 12 years, uh, trying to make that marriage work. Um, and it just, you know, he was unfaithful, um, always putting me down kind of thing. Two years after we got married, uh, I became pregnant with our daughter, uh, gave birth to a beautiful girl. She's my only child. I have a stepson now, but she was my only child. And when she, I was eight months pregnant with her, I had caught my husband being unfaithful. I decided that I was going to leave after I had my daughter, but I decided to stay. I was praying that God would save him, would save my marriage. And I thought maybe a child would change him. And yeah. it did for a short period of time, but that was short lived. And so uh, wound up getting a divorce when my daughter was three uh, because of his unfaithfulness. He would be gone for a week at a time. I wouldn't know where he was at. It was just a horrible, horrible marriage. Um, and, and that's not even the end of that relationship. Like I said, we were together 12 years all, all, all together, but we got divorced after about five years of marriage. Shortly after that, we got back together. We moved in together. We lived together and we got remarried. Um, and that didn't work either. I mean, we went through the whole gamut of the same scenario as we did before. Staying gone, not ever coming home, didn't know where he was, the unfaithfulness, um, those kind of things. So divorced again. And I know I'm, a bl I'm not really a, a real blonde, but, you know, people say, why did you keep going back? But I prayed for 12 years that God would save my marriage and would save him. And I truly mm -hmm. believed that that would happen. Uh, but he never would even go to church with me. Um, so long story short, that last stint of us being together after our second divorce, we lived together again. And that's kind of the beginning of the end. I became pregnant again. and. I told him that I was pregnant. Now, you'll have to understand where our relationship was. It was not a good scenario to bring another child into this situation. As volatile as it was and as horrible as he was to me, he was even just as bad as a father to our daughter. Um, so I told him one day, I said, well, I'm pregnant. And he said, well, we don't need a child. And I said, no, we don't. But this is the way that, that it's turned out. So this is reality. About two weeks later went by. And he came in from work one day and he said, sit down, I want to talk to you. He said, I've made us an appointment. And I was thinking maybe he'd made an appointment for us to go get married again or some counseling or something. But no, he had called the abortion clinic in Atlanta, Georgia. 
and had made me an appointment to have an abortion. You know, as bad as our marriage was, Adnan, I'd never thought about ending that mar- that that child's life. But um, I went along with it. I didn't say no. Um, I was at the point to where I didn't know what else to do. And I thought maybe this was best. And, you know, I could have said no. I could have stood up to him and said, no, this is not what I want. But I didn't. And I regret that still today. But I went to Atlanta and I was a number. They didn't even give me a name. I was just a number and I was called back and nobody counseled me. Nobody talked to me about the procedure or what to expect. They called my number, took me back, performed this abortion and murdered my child and gave me a graham cracker and some Mountain Dew until I was well enough to get up. And then they sent me well on my way, never called to check on me, never cared about my well-being. And I knew that I was just going through the motions that a lot of other women go through. And I have never in my life, and I've been through a lot of tragedy in my life, but I've never in my life felt so alone as I did on that that trip home from the clinic. Um, I couldn't look at him again in the same light. I knew that I was deceiving myself, thinking he was ever going to be the husband to me that I wanted or the father to my child that I wanted or that we needed. And I just knew that it was over. And so I went home that day and got in the bed. And I remember just saying, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm done with church. I'm done with God. I'm done with praying. I'm done with singing. I'm done. You know, and I I blamed God because I didn't want to take the blame for it. So I blamed my precious Lord and Savior for my bad choice. And I got out in the world, Adnan, and I did things that I'm so ashamed of today. And I served Satan for about seven years and uh, didn't take any part of church. I I believe that if you live the life of Christ, your, your life should be an example of that. And I just I just wouldn't go to church, didn't want anything to do with it. And every Saturday, my dad would come over to my house and he would say, "Uh, why don't you come to church, Darlene? I'd love to hear you sing again. I said, Daddy, I can't go to church. I'm living out in the world. I'm going to nightclubs. I'm drinking. Well, Adnan, it would break my dad's heart um, to know that I was living that kind of life, knowing the life that I was raised up to be and and the, the home I was raised in. But this is how God works. You know, we wound up leaving each other. I made him leave. And that was the end of our relationship. I never wanted anything else to do with him. And um, I turned my back on God and got out in the world. But, you know, my daddy was always my hero. And he's the reason, big reason, one of the reasons that I'm here today. Um, My dad got real sick after about seven years of me living out in the world. And um, we were there in the ICU waiting room and they said he wasn't going to make it through the night. And I fell down on my knees there in the waiting room and I cried out to God. And I mean, I cried out to him because I felt like I was so far away that I would have to cry out to him for him to hear my voice. But you know what? He was right there. He was right there where I left him. And so I promised God that if he would let my daddy live just long enough for me to tell him that I've rededicated my life, that I promised God that night in the waiting room, God, I will serve you for the rest of my life to the end of my day, singing, sharing my testimony, whatever it is. If you'll just give me a few moments to let daddy wake up so I can tell him that you heard his prayers because I knew he prayed for me every day. I've walked in his house many times and heard him in the back room praying for me. And so the next morning, Adnan, the doctors came around and said, well, I can't really explain what's happened here because last night your father was in a bad way. and We didn't think he would make it. But this morning he's starting to wake up. We're going to try to remove him from the ventilator. His kidneys are working again. And I knew that God had heard my prayer. Come on. And so this is why I share my story. My daddy lived five more years. And two weeks after my daddy came home from the hospital, this is how God was testing my faith and my promises. I got a call from someone wanting me to audition for a gospel group full time, traveling on the weekends and things like that. I auditioned and I got that and I sang with this group for about seven years. And my daddy would come and go with us on the bus and sit on the front row. And my daddy passed away in 97, but he passed away knowing that, um, God answered his prayers and that his little girl was was back in the right line of of God's word again. And so this is why I do what I do. I do this to let people know that I am being used by God, even though my past looks terrible. 
And some people say, well, I just can't, I can't forgive myself. You know, it's not about that. God has already forgiven us. All we have to do is accept the fact that we have sinned. And when I came clean with him and I said, God, please forgive me. I want to be used by you. You know, God's looking for for people, not just spectator Christians. He's looking for people that's getting up off those pews and willing to do what God's called us to do. And he took me that night there in that waiting room and he picked up all those broken pieces Come and on. Molded me back together again. And I'm more beautiful than I was before. Hallelujah. And I have had pastors tell me you can't sing in my church because you're, you've been divorced, you know, and let me just tell you something. God don't work that way. God don't work that the way the church has failed the Christian community. We need to reach out to those that are going through hard times and we need to lend a helping hand and let them know that God loves us. Even when we make uh, failures in our life and we make bad decisions, God didn't say, well, let me think about this, darling. You've done some bad things. No, he said, welcome home, my child. I was that prodigal and he opened his arms up and he was there waiting on me and he embraced me and welcomed me back home. Wow. You know, he'll leave the 90 and nine to go look for that one lost soul. And yes. I was so blessed and so thankful that he started to open doors for me at nine. And he still is. And you're Amen. part of that. And I just want to thank you for letting me be able to share my story. And I hope that it's an encouragement to other women as well as men out there. Yes, absolutely. No matter what our past is, God can take that and he can do something with it. Yes, absolutely. Wow. I'm so blessed. And also those people are watching right now. And I want to ask each and every one who are watching right now, if you could give us a favor, I believe this story needs to be heard to a wide range of people that who are at the verge of thinking about even thinking about Planned Parenthood or any kind of sort of clinic. Type right below. Let us know where you're watching from and also share this with somebody i need i i'm telling you somebody in your friend list today needs to hear this testimony because i want to put strong emphasis on that and uh, also if you have a prayer request please feel free to type your prayer request right below this video we want to pray for you and i want to um get back to darlene that even though you felt like you were broken into a million different pieces but god has made you whole put you together how what is that message for somebody who have done the same thing because i heard somebody said that once you do abortion you never f forgive yourself but how were you able to forgive yourself or that is a very good question i was doing a women's conference one time and i was speaking to about 250 300 women and i was talking about extraordinary joy how to live a life of extraordinary joy even when we come up against difficult things that happen in our life. Yes. And one of the things, the first number one thing is you have to know Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. You got to know Jesus to have any kind of joy in your life. Yes. But one of those things, Adnan, was forgiveness. Mm. And I said, not only do you forgive others, even those that haven't asked us for forgiveness, but we have to forgive ourselves sometimes. Yeah. And it was as though uh, God just tapped me on the shoulder, Adnan, and he said, you're being a hypocrite. I mean, I, I heard it just so loudly. He said, oh, you're up here telling all these women about how to forgive and forgiveness. And you've never forgiven yourself. And I shared my story about the abortion for the very first time in public. Nobody had ever heard that story before. And I, I cried and I told the women exactly what I just told you. I said, he's telling me I got to come clean. And I shared my story. And there's a lady that was in that audience. She was 82 years old. She came up to me and she said, I had an abortion years ago in a back alley long before they even had anything. Everybody knew about abortions. She said, and did you know I've carried that with me, that guilt, that shame my whole life? Nobody's ever known that. My kids, none of nobody. And she said, today I came clean. And, and it was like an 82 year old woman. And every time I shared that story, Adnan, I hear women say, I thought I could never find happiness again. I thought I could never be released from this change that, uh, of guilt that Satan had me bound by. And right. I said, our past does not refine, define our future. Mm. God wants you to take that testimony and share it so that you can help others. The more you share it, 
the more freedom you'll feel and you'll understand how God can take beauty from ashes. Come on. He can take something so dark and so ugly and he can bring it to light and make it something beautiful. God, I will see that child one day and I sing a song. Maybe I can sing it for you one day. Um, if heaven granted me one wish, I would run all over heaven and I'd find my little boy. And know for the first time that real pure joy and give my God the glory for raising him just right in a land where we'll never say goodbye. God's raising that child and I'm going to see that child someday. But for now, I'm going to share that story and give other women and other people that have some kind of something in their past that they just can't break through. God is able to take that and make something beautiful of it. Absolutely. Wow. Praise the Lord. I want all the ladies or all the guys that if you have a prayer request, please type right below this video. We want to pray for you. Please send it, send us your prayer, right? You, we're going to read it right live on this broadcast. I'm going to pray for you. And um, there is a few songs I told, told Darlin. I will be bringing that on from her website. If you want to go on her website, you can type darlinchapman.com. Uh, and I'm going to bring that on the screen. Did I say your website correct? or am I... Yes, darlingchapman.com. Yes. Okay, there we go. It's on the screen. You can yeah. take a look at it. And um, please go on the web uh, website. And then my favorite part on the website, as I was looking at it, it's a store. If you go to store, you're going to be able to find a couple of her different albums. Darling, is that you? or? That's me. That's you. Faith in Him, Stepping Out, mm -hmm. and all the different songs. Uh, 99 cents, guys. Yeah. You can get this song, download it right from the website, or That's Love, or Merry Christmas from Our House to Yours, and mm -hmm. all sorts of different, but, uh, different sorts of album. God of all, heart and soul. So, so many different uh, songs. You can get it from there. But I wanted to uh, bring it to uh, a lots of people's attention. It is important that we are living in a very last days. And you have brought, uh, you talked of many things on your show and social media have been uh, banned you for that. But maybe we just like stay on the surface, give people a little bit of um, uh, the clips of it. That what is, do you feel in your spirit that is significant message for the people right now. The Lord is trying to communicate. You saw the eclipse, right? And you're yes. hearing all these things. Yep. You know, I was talking about things <clears throat> this past. I've been doing this for almost five years now, my podcast. And I was really sick this time last year. Uh, had gone through some different surgeries, three different surgeries, had problems with my eye, had to have it sewn shut. And so I was um, going through a really rough time. And during that time when I was laying in bed and I wasn't able to do my podcast, the Lord yeah. spoke to me in such an audible voice. <clears throat> he doesn't speak to me every day. I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be. But when I hear his voice, I know it. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to me and I said, God, is there something you're trying to tell me? Are you trying to get my attention? I'm here. I'm flat on my back. I got all this time now. What are you trying to tell me? And he said, I want you to focus. I want you to change your focus. I want you to start helping people prepare, but in a different way. And I've always tried to let people understand that we can't trust the government. We can't trust anything. We can't trust anybody. That's why the Bible says not to put our trust in faith in any man. Okay. Only in God. And we're living in a time of great deception. And I started doing my show and I called it Saul for shaken and waken, because when I started realizing the evil that's out there around us, that we had no clue just how evil and dark it was. Uh, Ephesians 5.11 came to, to my mind, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead reprove it or expose it. And so that was kind of my my thing. I'm going to expose this evil. I want people to wake up and understand we got to we got to link arms. We got to put on the whole armor of God because we got much work to do. And I started talking about those, but then he wanted me to start preparing people for a different time now. It's a different time. This is the great awakening. And God is trying to warn people and America that we've got blood on our hands. We have turned our back on God in every way possible. And God is saying, this is the great awakening. And I want my people to understand that I am telling you, it is time to repent. 
It's time to get real with God. And I believe this eclipse, the way it lined up with Nineveh and Jonah and the ark and all this kind of stuff and the way it made the X uh, from the eclipse back in 2017, you know, X marks the spot. I believe God's trying to warn people that we have got to repent. If we want our land to be healed, uh, we got to repent. And it's time that Christians become Christians and not just going to church on Sunday and not just tithing or any of those things. Those are great, but it takes more than that. And I believe God's telling me to tell people that this is the time to prepare. And I'm talking to pre prepare your hearts and your home and and start praying for our country like we've never prayed, because the only way we're going to survive this is is through a divine intervention. Absolutely. That is so true. And I want to share this comment with you, darling. Somebody um, here, her name is Melanie uh, Colbert. She said, you opened my close hearts, including mine. Oh. You opened many close hearts, including mine. That's what she said. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, the goal of my broadcast, if one person, you know, say what she just said, it's like, I feel like this time was worthwhile. I mean, we Absolutely. just spoke to the hearts and, uh, and the minds. And this is phenomenal. But take a moment. I want to now gear up towards the end of the broadcast. If we want to pray for people and yeah. um, encourage uh, and encourage them. So, hey, if you have a prayer request, I want to look right into the camera. Please feel free to type right below this broadcast. We want to pray for you. We want to believe God for your healing, deliverance, breakthrough, because yeah. you might be going through some very tough and rough time, and maybe at the bottom of you of your life or maybe hit the rock bottom but now it's your times to like go back up because somebody said that if you hit the rock bottom that's the only way there's the only way and that's to go up yes. and uh, i want to encourage you to share your prayer request with us and uh, we will love to pray for you and uh, here uh, the very first prayer uh, from d anderson she said our pastor needs prayer he has cancer oh. he's um and uh, can you see it on your screen yeah. or on your yeah. side here mm -hmm. you go Yes, it's metastasized and went to the hospital yesterday in the ambulance. Wow. Pray for my lost children. Oh, don't we all have that prayer? Yes. Our lost loved ones. And I think that's the burden that I bear is that I know the times we're living in. And there's so many out there, Adnan, that's walking around. They don't see the clues. They don't see the signs because they don't know God's word. Yeah. And those are, the, those are the people we need to have a burden for. But yeah. I want to encourage all of you that are in a bad situation or just feeling hopeless or maybe you're scared and you're confused because you're seeing all the insanity out there. And the reason we do our podcast is not to cause fear. God tells us not to fear 365 times in the Bible. That's every day we don't fear. But we are to walk according to his word. And if you are still alive and you're breathing, you still have a purpose here. Yes. Or you would be taken out. If you're still here with us, you have a calling on your life and a purpose. And it is to maybe pray for our country. But I'm, I'm asking you to get down on your knees and ask God to reveal to you what your purpose is for such a time as this, because you have one. You have one. And when you walk in that purpose, it's such a joy to know that you are doing what God's called you to do. So I see all those prayers, a knee replacement, uh, loved ones. Uh, husband has Alzheimer's. Goodness, we all have have needs in our life. We all have prayer requests. A lot of you, a lot of you have told me you're having financial problems with the way the economy is and the groceries and and all that kind of thing. So whatever your situation is, we will definitely keep that in our prayers and we will pray over that today as well. If, if that's what Adnan wants to do. Yes, absolutely. Take take away and darling, let's pray for these people. You read okay. some of the prayer requests right there. All right. Thank you for your prayer request. God, we just come to you today and we want to thank you for this divine appointment that you've assembled here today. Lord, I pray for Adnan and the, the vision that he has. And I love that this is called Vision TV. And Lord, you told us in your word to take the word out. That's our calling. You want yeah. to know what our calling is. You've yeah. already told us our purpose is to share the good news of Jesus Christ with other people. And so I pray blessings on this ministry. Yes. Uh, I pray for every need that's been made known here, whether it's spoken or unspoken. Uh, Lord, there's so much confusion and chaos and fear out there. Lord, you know the needs of everyone. Even before we ask, you know them. But Lord, I look at their faithfulness and their belief in prayer. And when somebody asks for prayer, they're knowing that we can take those prayer requests to yes. you, our Father, and that you are so faithful in hearing those prayer requests. So Lord, I'm asking you right now on behalf of these precious people, 
on their on their needs and their their situations, Lord, their life circumstances, whatever they are. I'm asking you right now that you will reach down and you will supply every need they have. Lord, I pray that they'll feel your presence. They'll feel the warmth of your hugs around them. I pray that they will feel that presence of you in their life today. And Lord, that we can, the next time we come together, we can hear some, some stories of how you answered those prayers. Lord, we thank you for this time to share my testimony, how you forgave me for something that I couldn't forgive myself for. But yes, God, Lord. you saw fit to use me in spite of all the things that I did. And the times I blamed you, God, you saw fit to the day I came back. You were so loving and so faithful yeah. to take me back. You didn't judge me and you didn't even have to think about it, Lord. And if there's somebody out there that's dealing with a the guilt they just can't let go of, I pray that they would turn that over to you today. Yes, Break Lord. free from those chains of bondage and guilt, Lord, that Satan has us bound by so that they can fly free to be used for your honor and for your glory. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to guide me and Adnan and anybody that's out here trying to spread the good news, that you would open doors that no man can close, that we would see people come to know you. And I believe that that time is coming, a great revival. Time is drawing nigh. And you said, when you see these things happening to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Lord, we're looking up. But go with us, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given me. And Lord, I pray blessings on this ministry as it goes out and goes forth. Lord, thank you for all that you do for us. Keep us safe. These things we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Darling, and again, I want to encourage people, if you are new on this broadcast, you can go over, check out the website. It's called um, Darlin Chapman. I'm going to also put that in the comment, and uh, you can visit the website and be blessed by her story and uh, also her ministry. And if anybody wants to follow, what is the best way to for people to follow you on the social media? So why I'm saying that so they can hear all the great things you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Adnan. Um, I go by Darlene Chapman because of the censorship. We talked about that earlier. Yes. I wound up on Facebook under Rita D. Chapman. So that's where I do all my Facebook live podcast. But I also uh, upload all my videos to uh, Telegram. You can find me under Darlene Chapman on Telegram. Truth Social, Rita D. Chapman, and Rumble, R. D. Chapman. So you can find me at several different places, but Rita D. Chapman on Facebook is my main page, but I do have those other platforms where I do upload and download those videos. This is phenomenal. Well, what a pleasure to have you on this broadcast. I'm sure that there are so many people who heard the story and testimony of Darlene Chapman. They've been blessed, encouraged to continue to follow God uh, without any doubts in their minds, because I truly believe when you are in Christ Jesus, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of yeah. Jesus Christ, according to Romans, as Paul talks about, no nakedness, no poverty, no nothing, no sin. If the blood, I tell people all the time, like there is no any bigger sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wa wash Amen. away. So yeah. every single sin, whether it's a homosexual, whether you went uh, on and on, Everything can be forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Amen. True repentance. When you come with the true repentance, your sins are forgiven. So, well, thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming on and um, all you. the pe beautiful people on this broadcast. Continue to share and spread this word and testimony. God bless you.